Mycotoxins are extremely small molecules. You could try catching them with a really fine net, or you could just watch the Mycotoxin Minute. We spend a lot of time here getting into the analysis of specific samples. You know, country X has YPPB of mycotoxin C, so producers of grain G should think about doing A, B and C to keep their levels of C below threshold T, you know what I mean. You also know why we do this. Mycotoxins are dangerous. They can affect the growth and performance of farm animals and in some cases cause cancer in animals and humans. Mycotoxins also have huge economic consequences, with billions lost every year in unusable raw materials and lost livestock. So it makes sense for us to track mycotoxins. Today we want to change the perspective a bit and look at mycotoxins from the point of view of the molds that make them. In other words, what are mycotoxins for? Let's set some expectations here. We don't really know why molds produce mycotoxins. They don't aid the growth, development or reproduction of the fungi. In some cases, however, they do weaken their host plant. And the molds that make them do this in reaction to environmental factors like temperature and humidity. Take our old frenemy Fusarium. Some species that produce dawn are more likely to proliferate if it's cold and humid. If it's warmer and drier, Fusarium species that produce fumonisins are more likely to dominate. But, and this is the frustrating thing about mycotoxins, this is only a tendency. And that's a scientist's life. We have to look truth in the face regardless of how inconvenient or annoying it might be. While we could fill a book with all the things we don't know about mycotoxins, we've instead spent our time filling a website with all the things we do know. To see what I mean, visit fromalabs.com. Thanks and see you soon.